This is Twit. Now, we talked about it before. There's many services out there. There's VoIP, there's unified communication packages, and they provide a lot of help for the remote workforce today. But there's also a new one on the rise, and that's UCAS. It's just unified communications as a service. And there's actually some confusion on what's available and what's not available, what it supports and what it doesn't support. I'll pass it over to Cheeber. Cheeber, what's what's going on here? Well, I'm going to, uh, you know, like always, start with a little bit of a history lesson. So eight years ago, I ran a um, test in my lab back at the University of Hawaii with a gentleman from Microsoft named Francois Doremu. He was talking to about a relatively new um, cert, um, system that Microsoft had where unified communications and Microsoft Exchange were melted together um, for the, well, not the first time, but really close. Anyway, um, Oliver Rist was actually uh, involved with that. And um, PC Mag, in this case, started answering the big question. What is the difference between VoIP and UCAS, which is Unified Communications as a Service? Well, the bottom line really is the definitions are not real clear. Um, there's a VoIP as a service has been around for quite a while. A lot of the big players have it. Unified communications is available either on-prem or it's available in the cloud. So UCAS and VoIP, a lot of times you could actually be talking about the same type of thing. Um, one of the things that I kind of feel like is that the difference is true VoIP, even VoIP as a service, is oriented more towards telephony. Unified communications is oriented more towards I guess you would start off with text messaging, you know, message passing and so forth. But I think the huge, huge difference in my mind is presence. So like I, I was working with um, some Avaya folks and so forth, their VoIP solution, which is designed to work on desk sets, just like old style um, plain old telephone systems, even they had integrated presence. And the idea behind presence is being able to flag, am I busy or not? Now, one of the things that I wrote up in that article when I did it for Info, InfoWorlds oh so long ago was, gee, how cool it was to be able to have an integration of presence all the way through the entire office suite. So the demonstration that Francois did for me was how we were working on a SharePoint document that actually had presence information for the authors. And I was able to actually find out, oh, gee, I'm, I'm working on a document, in this case, maybe a spreadsheet. And I was able to go and flag, um, you know, I need to ask the author of this section what they were thinking about, but it's flagged as he's, he or she is busy. Well, I could actually even become granular enough to actually start talking about, well, you can interrupt me if you're part of my team or if you're my boss. So that's kind of cool. So I'm going to ask Kurt first. Let, let's ignore whether it's a cloud or on-premise because right now the definitions are blurring. Um, a lot of the systems are hybrids. Um, I definitely know about that in the Microsoft world. The Avaya world is very similar and so forth. But from a planning point of view for the enterprise, um, are you hearing more about VoIP or more about unified communications? Or is this just not even an issue in your conversations? Well, I think for a lot of organizations, the evolution to unified communications has happened. You know, the in the same way that very few of us now see um, our cell phones as things that are primarily used for voice calls, we seldom see our enterprise communication infrastructure as something that is a primarily voice-oriented system. Uh, in general, we are doing many more uh, text conversations or video conversation or some sort of hybrid communication 
than we did even four years ago. And like so many other aspects of enterprise IT, this was a trend that had begun but has been accelerated tremendously by the needs brought about by the pandemic. So I think that VoIP is something that is now seen as a specialized case um, for everyone, but I'm going to say the very largest enterprises uh, or the very smallest enterprises, those organizations that are either so large that they still have separate data and voice teams uh, can look at VoIP. And those organizations that are so small that they don't have to worry about any sort of online collaboration for their employees, all they're doing is taking calls from potential customers and partners. They're small enough that VoIP is a thing. For the vast middle, it's unified communications all the way. Well, UC's got some really interesting things that we can do. You know, the integration, I think, is spectacular. And the, like you said, the line between telecom, you know, voice and unified communications is almost erased in a lot of organizations. But I'm going to throw this to Lou only because I've seen some of the original advances in unified communication showing up in at Microsoft and they were using you got you've they've been using you as guinea pigs for a heck of a long time. So <laughs> what kinds of you see is now part of your daily life, especially during the pandemic? It's a good question. I mean, I think with unified communication, you need a large spectrum of, of services to support it, right? I think you need the ability to collaborate. You need to be able to have things like um, you know, spam calling, right? It's part of calling itself, making sure that you understand who's not calling, what's not supposed to be talking to you. Um, you know, support for other services, the integration services, right? Being able to serve, integrate with cars or automobiles, integrate with um, uh, other services. You need to be able to bring your kind of your contact center into one unified location. Um, you need to have be able to expand all the markets and be support all the different markets. So I think, you know, a lot of these companies out there have these end to end solutions, right? You have the Ring Centrals of the world who who is a sponsor, but we have Ring Central, we have Cisco, we have Zoom, we have Microsoft who are supporting um, you know, the the unified communication workspace um and that and uh, UCAS as a service. Um and I think one thing you'll find that's interesting across all of them is you know they 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 go to the fundamentals of that of a, a standardized um, a phone system and they pile all the services on top of it and they they support like this this way of like collaboration in between all of them and unify unifying them all together so you can make use out of them as part of your calling service and I think that's the key. There's some really cool features that I like though. Uh, one of them actually their recent just came out. It's called Speaker Coach. As you're as you're doing a call, let's say with a large group of people, you're presenting. Um, it actually give uses AI to say, hey, how many times you're saying ah and um, or should you pause or should you slow down? Or and it actually gives you real time feedback so you can do better and you can sound more fluent and and um, sound more uh, like what you know if you, you know what you're talking about. Um, so I think it's a really great feature. Um, but I think these are the types of things that are piled on top of standard calling services and video services. And I, I think it's great. I think it's, it's supporting the workforce, especially in the remote world. Well, one of the things I'm really excited about is tr on you know real time um, translation services. I've seen demonstrations yeah. from both Microsoft and Google, and the demonstration was someone speak doing a presentation in English, and it was live translating into Mandarin, which was absolutely staggering. Um, the other thing that I have wanted ever since I tried to call a friend and woke him up in Paris uh, was location integration. And that's definitely starting to happen or has already happened in a lot of UC solutions where you can set up rules on who's allowed to ring through. Um, so, so there's a lot of things that could go um, and happen. And, you know, I'm looking forward to it. I think the I think the future for communication, interpersonal communications, is very bright. And I think as we start getting things like artificial intelligence to help um, be that 
the operator. You know, no more Lily Tomlin with one ringy dingy, two ringy dingy, and so forth. It'd be nice to have an AI that can help manage the communications load because I don't know about you folks, but I can I get kind of deluged by calls and SMSs and emails. So as unified communication becomes really unified, I think we're going to have a lot of interesting things happening. 